This is the United Arab Emirates, which is seven Arabic Emirates that are united. It is the fourth largest economy in Middle East after Turkey, Saudi Arabia and Iran. The nation is a home to Dubai, Abu Dhabi and five more Emirates, which are in turn home to all those videos you see with sports cars, luxury life and super expensive yachts. All of this was made possible by the wealth the nation has found in oil. You can't imagine the UAE without looking at oil. And the way that this has transformed this aunt's desolate and very poor nation into the crazy expensive and luxury country that we know and love today. But for sure oil isn't the entire story. The nation has a robust plan in place to transition its economy in preparation for the day when the oil runs dry, or plummet in value by 30% overnight. As always though, with these type of nations, it all kind of starts when they got independent from British Empire. The history of the United Arab Emirates is not similar to any other countries at the Arabian Gulf. Its main industry was pearling, which literally meant going out on boats and diving for pearls you get from oysters. Now, this wasn't such a bad industry by early 1900 standards, it kept a fair few people employed and they were easy to export. And for the most part, it kept the relatively underdeveloped economy chugging along. Then there was World War I and the Great Depression, oh, and they discovered how to make synthetic pills, and then there was another World War, and oh, and then India, the largest market for pearls at this time claimed independence and raised tariffs. So whatever was left of this little pearl industry was gone. Before it was the United Arab Emirates. It was just a collection of kingdoms that were all technically under the rule of the British but also had their own kings that didn't always get along. In 1971, the United Arab Emirates became an independent state, and they were now both independent and united. So they were sitting in the desert in the mid-70s, wondering what to do next. In the late 1960s, about four years before the Emirates' full independence from the British, they got a call from this club called a PEC where other major oil-producing nations were gathering to collude on the price of oil, which all sounded pretty good. A PEC was a major driving force that led the UAE to massively increase its oil supply, and then actually start exporting it to other countries that would use it. Now the biggest consumer of the Emirates oil wasn't the UK or America, but at this time, had their own suppliers pretty much set. Rather, it was actually Japan, who quickly became the nation's biggest customer, which was great for both nations. On the other side of the equation, this oil boom was great. Starting from that time the government leading by Sheikh Said made wise decisions to reinvest the money coming from oil sale into countries' economy, rather than their own pockets like it was and still is in countries like Russia or Kazakhstan. They built schools and ports and roads and refineries, which did a few things. For starters, of course, it massively improved the quality of life of the citizens in the nation. The second thing it did, though, was actually increase the amount of money they could make from oil. Even though oil is seen as a pretty easy commodity to get rich off, it still requires a lot of infrastructure, oil wells and roads to get to those wells and ports for oil tankers all take a lot of investment. Most countries around the world struggle with the problem of unemployment. Governments ponder the issue of populations not getting good paying jobs because they will employed workforce is the backbone of a national economy. It means that you have people producing things and being paid in cash, which they can then use to purchase other goods. And so the circle of life continues. The UAE kind of has a different problem though. You see, with its all boom and reinvestment into infrastructure, the tiny population of the nation wasn't going to cut it to build everything that they needed to be built, and facilitate all of the industries that needed to be facilitated, so it just imported some workers. Today, just under 90% of the population of the nation are foreign workers. This is the highest rate of foreign residents of any nation in the world. In fact, it is one of the only major nations in the world where the largest represented group of nationalities within the nation is not that of the nation itself. As of making this video, workers from India and Pakistan are more common than an Emirati citizen in the United Arab Emirates. Workers from these nations mostly moved to the UAE because of the work. Now the work is not good. 
It often involves hard labor, in terrible conditions, working long hours for very little pay. But it's still better than the work that they get back in their home countries. So what a lot of these workers do is live and work in the UAE for a couple of years. Set themselves up financially by sending money back home for themselves, and then they move back as well. The country is way too expensive for them to have any quality of life while they are working there. But if they really rue it, they can save their pay, which goes a long, long way back home. Most smart or rich nations know that all wealth is not forever. And even if the oil wells of the nation never actually run dry oil is just a commodity, the price fluctuates from time to time, which will have major impacts on an economy that is highly dependent on oil to fuel its economy. Now, every nation has a different strategy for dealing with this problem. Norway saved up all of their oil money into a nationwide hedge fund. Then Sheila completely train wreck themselves in the hope that foreign aid was a viable long-term growth industry and the United Arab Emirates has put its bet on diversification. A lot of that infrastructure spending was not directed entirely towards facilitating its oil industry, but rather a lot of it was into building these beautiful metropolis as we see today, most notably Dubai and Abu Dhabi, the former of which is the most popular tourist destination in all of the Middle East and the fifth most in the world. Tourism is a huge growth industry. For starters, of course, it has many major attractions in its own right. The Burj Khalifa, Burj Al Arab, the Palm, and even its natural coastline is pretty spectacular, but it is also really lucky geographically. It is in an amazing central location between Europe, Asia, and Africa. The Emirates have capitalized on this further by developing their own airline. Emirates, Etihad, Fly Dubai are today one of the largest airlines in the world and they use Dubai as their hub for most of their international flights. This decision was made to attract travelers made to make the most of that stopover and spend some time and tourist dollars in this lovely city. Now, tourism is great industry with a tremendous amount of money in turnover. We have already seen that the United Arab Emirates is a really great place geographically, but it has gone beyond this to make itself really attractive to foreign business. It has no corporate tax, even for foreign corporations, no income taxes, and small sales tax at 5%. It's effectively a tax-free nation, which makes businesses really excited. This was a bit of a risky plan. Of course, not raising any taxes and living almost exclusively off your oil wealth was what happened in Venezuela before it all went downhill. The UAE plan is that they will be able to establish their major cities as business harbors for the region, in very similar ways to how Singapore is a business hub in the Southeast Asian region. Both countries have very, very small populations with huge expatriate communities. Both countries are the hub for their major international airline. Both countries have very flexible tax arrangements to be attractive to businesses. If it can work for Singapore, why can't it work for UAE? And well, this is actually fair. The country doesn't yet quite have the track record to show that we'll be able to fully realize this goal. But it has done all of the right things at the right time to make itself a center for business rather than just a wool of oil. The United Arab Emirates is a country in transition, and its transition was and still is rapidly evolving. In the span of 40 years, the nation has gone from a tribal state of fishing villages to skyscrapers camels, to Lamborghinis, wooden pulling boats to super yachts. It's a nation that has had a lot of luck, but has actually capitalized on this luck. It knows this wealth is not forever, and it is taking steps to ensure that the nation can continue to harbor the kind of wealth that facilitates Gettys as polis vehicles. But it's a high-risk game. I fully expect if I was to revisit the economy of the UAE in 10 years, it would be a completely different country. Just like many other economies around the world, Arab state's second largest economy. The UAE is also suffering from the impact of coronavirus. Trade, tourism and transportation are the foundations of the UAE economy and as the region has had one of the strictest lockdowns in the world. Such travel restrictions and strict lockdown measures have had a serious impact on tourism. Businesses and the supply chain of businesses in the UAE. 
The UAE Central Bank has recently reported that they have seen a significant decline in the economic activity as a result of the lockdown. Recent reports of the International Monetary Fund projects the real GDP of the UAE is in decline of 6.6% for 2020, stating the impact of low oil prices as one of the key reasons for the decline in the UAE economy. The UAE government has recently introduced several policies to boost the economy and moderate the impact of coronavirus, with stimulus measures worth about 18% of the GDP of the UAE out of the 100 billion dirhams worth of monetary aid announced so far. The majority of the funds have been earmarked towards SMEs as well as consumers. The Emirates like Dubai and Abu Dhabi have announced individual fiscal packages in addition to the 16 billion dirhams stimulus announced by the UAE cabinet for all seven emirates. In total, the combined size of all the encouragement programs now exceeds 120 billion dirhams. Hopefully there will be a positive growth in the economy of this wonderful country. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing.